St John's College. There could hardly be a more appropriate place for our dramatised reading of the Apocalypse, the last book in the Bible of which the saint is the presumed author, and in which he describes his apocalyptic visions of the four last things, and the last judgement, and the end of the world. His words have inspired countless artists in the past, in paint and in stained glass, and they continue to inspire new visions down to this very day. Naturally enough, we're going to draw on these images to reinforce our dramatization, giving priority to those painted a thousand years ago, and projecting them in ways that we've evolved in a long series of similar productions, ranging from Homer's epics through the plays of Sophocles to the Gospel of St. Mark. But our main innovation is that we're going to take you back another thousand years to the early second century AD, as we bring to life the sounds and rhythms of the original Greek. This is how we worked the miracle five years ago with the heroic figure of Ajax in the Iliad. And this is how the same reader will bring to life the description of the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven at the end of our play. The Apocalypse is an astonishing book that continues to enjoy an astonishing popularity. It's the ultimate source of almost everyone's mental image of the court of heaven, of Armageddon, or of the Last Judgment. Dozens of its phrases have become familiar quotations. And we're all pretty sure we know the meaning of apocalyptic, which is why journalists can throw the word around with such abandon. But when you see it performed, you'll find that St John's Apocalypse is rather different from the stereotype, and a great deal more interesting. For me personally, I should explain, the book is a poem in free verse that makes wonderful use of the resources of oral poetry. I think you'll be almost literally spellbound by its incantations and enchanted by the hypnotic use of repetition of the kind we learnt to love as children. The effect is cumulative. Every single stage in the opening of the seven seals and the sounding of the seven trumpets needs to be heard in full every time just as you need to hear each expanding section every time in a nursery rhyme like this is the house that Jack built. Of course I respond to the content, to the prophecies of doom and redemption, and of course I'm moved by the picture language of the visions, but for me the most important element in this or in any other poem lies in the music of the words and their power of suggestion and I'm glad to find myself in very good company in my urge to perform those words as a play to an audience in a theatre. It was none other than John Milton in the preface he wrote to Samson Agonistes who took the book of Revelation as a paradigm to vindicate his decision to write a Greek tragedy on a sacred subject having been taught to view the text as a dramatic poem, distinguished into acts, containing choruses of heavenly song, with John as actor and interlocutor throughout. So whatever your stance or expectations, I do hope you'll simply surrender yourself to this dramatic poem, which will sweep you up into heaven in the prologue, unveil its prophetic visions in the five acts of the drama itself, and return you to earth again in the epilogue. I've slimmed down the text so the performance will last only a little over an hour. 
The medieval paintings will make the visions even more vivid, and specially composed subtitles will make the meaning clear. You'll hear live trumpets, an authentic plain chant, and above all, you'll hear the sounds and rhythms of the Greek. Και είδαν ότι ίνιξε τη σφραγίδα την έκτην και σύσμος μέγασε γένετο και ο ήλιος μέλασε γένετο σάκος τρίχινος και η σελήνη όλη γένετο σέμα.